Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today, we're going to cover the top five CPUs that I would use for a new PC build in 2023. This covers the full range from budget to super premium, and there should be something in here for everyone. To be absolutely clear, this is for new PC builds, or at least substantially new builds, not CPU upgrades. That's another topic completely, and we are not going to cover that here. If you have an i5-10400F and you want to know if an i9-10850K is a logical upgrade, you'll just have to wait for a future video. A list of five CPUs would definitely fit into a YouTube short, and that's probably something I should do. However, that is not what we're doing today. I want to explain who each of these is for, why I picked them, which motherboard I would put with each of them, and as they say, the devil is in the details. So with that being said, please sit back and relax, grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into it. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price, get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. Our first CPU today might surprise some of you, the Intel i3-12100F, which is currently on sale for just $67 at the time of filming. Yes, a four core CPU in 2023, crazy, I know. Why is this here, you ask? Simple, price and value to low-end builders who want something modern but don't care to play the newest AAA games and cost is the most important component. The single thread performance is about 10% faster than a Ryzen 5 5600, and you gain the benefit of new technologies on a more modern platform while having a possible CPU upgrade path all the way to the i9-13900K in the future. Multi-thread is slower than the 5600 by about 24%. However, if you care about multitasking performance and new AAA game performance, then you shouldn't buy either one of those CPUs. This is for older games, esports games like CSGO and light computing in general. Which motherboard would I buy? You could go with a B660 such as this ASRock board for just $95. However, sadly, the days of inexpensive $50 motherboards are gone. For $35 more, you can get this Z690 board, which has a few more features and would better support a future CPU upgrade should you choose to make one. My main word of caution towards an i3-12100F is that while it does work well enough today for low-end PC uses, it will age like milk going forward. So consider that you will need an upgrade sooner rather than later compared to the other choices on this list. Our second CPU today should surprise no one who has followed me over the past nine months. The i5-13600KF for just $287 at the time of filming. 14 cores and 20 threads, 5 plus gigahertz clock speeds out of the box, plenty of performance for today and tomorrow for most people. This CPU is the best price to performance chip that we're going to look at today. If value for the money is key, you've come to the right place. The single thread performance is slightly above the similarly priced Ryzen 5 7600X, and it absolutely demolishes it in multi-threaded performance. Like seriously, it's not even close when it comes to multitasking or even multi-threaded workloads. The i5 E cores may not be as fast as the P cores, but they are absolutely 100% faster than the E cores on the Ryzen 5, which is because it doesn't have any. Which motherboard would I buy? This ASRock Z690 Steel Legend would be very high on my list. As you can see, I bought one. For under $200, you get a premium board with good power delivery, enough USB ports, PCI Express lanes, M.2 slots, and other features for most users. It also comes with BIOS flashback, so if your specific board does not include 13th gen Raptor Lake support out of the box, it is a 600 series board after all, not a 700 series, then a 10 minute BIOS flash from a USB thumb drive will fix that right up. No 12th gen Alder Lake CPU required. This CPU is powerful enough to run any game on the market, including the newest big budget AAA games, older games at insane frame rates, and live streaming should you wish. 
The one change I'd make if you are live streaming would I would get the non-F version of the CPU. Spend the extra $30 to get the i5-13600K, which includes Intel's iGPU. Intel's QuickSync is legit awesome for video encoding, and you can set up OBS to use it for live streaming while leaving your graphics card 100% free to game with. Just be aware that if you buy this CPU, you're at the end of the road with LGA 1700. There is no sense in upgrading this to anything else in the future beyond replacing the board and CPU completely. If you think you'll need the i9 at some point, just buy it now. It will not be cheaper in the future. Finally, notice this is a DDR4 board. Right now, you can buy 64 gigabytes of DDR4 for the same price as 32 gigabytes of DDR5, or just pay half the amount for 32 gigs of DDR4. This is a solid source of savings versus our next CPU. The difference in performance is trivial unless you have an RTX 4090, which has no place on an i5 anything in the first place. Our third CPU today is from Team Red, this time going with AMD's awesome Zen 4-based Ryzen 7 7700X, selling for just $295 at the time of filming. This is actually less expensive than the similar Ryzen 7 7700 non-X chip, so keep that in mind when shopping for CPUs. Sometimes a faster chip is less expensive because of sales or promo codes. If, where you live or at the time you're buying, the 7700 non-X chip is $30 or more less than the X chip, then just get that, because in practice they both perform almost exactly the same. The Ryzen 7 7700X is effectively tied with the i5-13600KF when it comes to single thread performance. In some games and programs, the Ryzen is faster, and in others, the Intel is faster. The differences really are a rounding error, and either is amazing. Where the Ryzen 7 falls off a bit is in multi-threaded workloads. It is closer to the i5 than the 7600X, but it still is slower by a decent amount. Having said that, the Ryzen CPU has one massive advantage going forward that may sway many of you towards Team Red. The ability to drop a future Zen 5 CPU into the same board, and perhaps even a Zen 6. AMD's AM4 platform lasted from 2017's launch of the Ryzen 7 1700 series to the 2022 launch of the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. That just shows how awesome a long-term socket can really be. If AM5 has a similar useful life, it may very well be the better long-term investment, even if it costs a bit more now and it's a bit slower in the short term. Which motherboard would I buy right now for this CPU? This Gigabyte X670 Aorus Elite would be a strong pick at $224 at the time of filming. You get a monster power delivery of 20 total power phases, quad M.2 slots, really, PCI Express 5.0 ports, the latest Wi-Fi 6E support, and so much more. This sort of board is good for today's CPU, and it should be solid for Zen 5 and perhaps even Zen 6 in the future. If we learned anything from AM4, it's that you don't want the cheapest board you can find. It will make upgrading harder in the future, because we don't know what that future holds. Please keep in mind that AM5 requires DDR5, so you will pay a little bit more overall for the RAM here. The Team Red option is $620 for the CPU, motherboard, and the RAM, versus about $520 for the i5 option that I mentioned before, and the same amount of RAM. You're paying $100 more and getting less overall performance, but you do have that future upgrade path in front of you, so the choice is yours. Our fourth CPU today needs no introduction, the absolutely bonkers i9-13900K. The absolutely fastest gaming CPU you can buy today for a super premium build, this currently leads the pack in the world of I have all of the money and I want a beast mode PC that can do it all. With 24 cores, 32 threads, and an out-of-the-box clock speed of over 5.5 GHz, this thing is an absolute monster of a CPU. It is overkill for just gaming today, but it will last a very long time and it will grow with you into newer, more demanding games over time. It's also an absolute powerhouse of a multitasking CPU with eight main performance cores for your primary tasks and 16 efficiency cores for background tasks or anything else that needs doing. This puts most of the Threadripper CPUs to shame. But wait, isn't the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D the 
fastest gaming CPU in the world? Eh, yes and no. The 7800X3D is indeed fast when running benchmarks on clean test benches using older games, RTX 4090 graphics cards, and running at 1080p. In the real world, where an RTX 4090 is more likely to be at 4K, or at least 1440p ultra-wide, and your PC isn't a clean test bench, but rather one that has many things installed and running in the background, the i9-13900K will be a superior experience in general. I'm sorry, but $450 for 8 cores in 2023 is just stupid. I refuse to entertain that level of nonsense no matter how fast CSGO runs. Make it $350 and I'm somewhat interested. Price it under $300 and it would actually become my number one recommendation. Price kills it for me, same as the 5800X3D did when it launched last year for $450. But games don't need all those cores, you say? Nonsense. Stop watching CSGO and Rainbow Six Siege benchmarks. Those aren't new games and neither needs any of these CPUs. Both CSGO and Rainbow Six Siege will run just fine on the i3-12100F. I can think of a dozen games off the top of my head that will use more than 8 cores to run smoother or with better 1% lows and better overall frame times. Not just new games. The Division 2 from 2019 is a good example of a game that will absolutely use 16 cores if you have them. Spider-Man Remastered, Battlefield 2042, Hitman 3, and the list just goes on from there. Which motherboard would I buy? Personally, I like this ASUS ROG Strix Z790-F board. It's expensive at $400, however, it is a pretty loaded board for a premium CPU. Having said that, in for a penny, in for a pound. If you're gonna buy an RTX 4090, and let's be honest, the i9-13900K really deserves one, then consider spending $200 more for the ROG Maximus Hero Board absolutely insane feature set and a $600 price to go along with it. Featuring five M.2 slots, yes, you heard me right, five of them, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, 21 phase power delivery rated at 90 amps, which is absolutely off the charts, 40 gigabit per second USB 4, so much more beyond that. I couldn't, I could do an entire video on a board like that. It is crazy. If you're building a PC to last for the next five years, you may not need Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 today, but you may very well be glad you have them in the future. For what it is worth, you can install the 13900K on the Z690 Steel Legend and it will work just fine. DDR4 RAM is absolutely fine to use with a 13900K, just be aware that with a higher end GPU, you will lose a bit of performance going that route. Also, it's important to note that if you want an i9 ever, buy one now. It will not actually be cheaper in the future. Look at the launch price of the i5-9600K and the i9-9900K back from 2018. Now look at their current value on eBay. There was a $250 price gap at launch, and there's a $250 price gap today. Do this again for the i 5 10600K and the i9-10900K. The prices may drop, but the price difference tends not to, at least not during the useful life of the CPU. That brings us to our fifth and final CPU today, and this one is a doozy. The Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. $670 at the time of filming. This is $120 more than the i9-13900K. While that price gap is real, I don't think it matters that much in this case because honestly, we are well beyond price to performance here. Instead, we're going all out for that super premium experience. Single core performance is about 10% slower versus the 13900K and multi-core is about equal. However, the 3D cache will help make up that difference in some games. Personally, I consider these CPUs to be effectively tied. One will win in some cases, the other will win in others. For super premium users who want to keep up with the best, the single biggest benefit to the 7950X 3D is the ability to drop an 8950X 3D into your AM5 socket in two years time. I already talked about this in detail for the 7900X, so I won't repeat myself again on that topic. There has been some recent concern over exploding 3D chips from AMD. 
Personally, I think these concerns are a little overhyped. We've seen a small handful of cases online from people who had overvolts and overclocks outside of spec, and a few ASUS motherboards pushing voltage beyond limits. However, there have been no widespread reports of this happening at scale. There are also now BIOS updates to address the voltage concerns, so I would not hesitate to buy one today. Which motherboard would I buy? Might I suggest the board that I bought personally, the ASUS X670E ProArc Creator. At $460, it is not cheap, but it's also not overly expensive either for this sort of build. I use this board to build my personal Ryzen 9 7950X gaming PC at home that replaced my old i9-9900K. I installed a pair of 32GB DDR5-6000 CL30 Trident Z RGB Neo RAM kits, that's a mouthful, say that five times fast, to give me a total of 64GB of RAM, and I am happy to report the system worked the first time with two independent RAM kits installed at 6000 without complaint. Since I built this close to the launch of the Zen 4 CPUs, it was not remotely cheap. The RAM was three times the price it is today, and the board was more expensive as well. However, it has been 100% reliable and insanely fast compared to my old 9900K, so I have no complaints. Featuring four M.2 slots, Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 support, 10 gigabit Ethernet, and a host of other features sold me on this board. There are many, many others to pick from. However, I personally wanted the 10 gig networking and the USB 4 ports, so it worked for me. To answer the question, why didn't I build an i9-13900K, or for a gaming PC, even a 13600K, I use multiple monitors at home and I have a lot of things running at any given time. I made the mistake of buying an i5-2500K in 2011 to replace my i7-920, Never again will I repeat that mistake. It was faster, but the lack of hyper-threading made it a side grade as multitasking actually got worse. I went with the Ryzen 9 for two reasons. First, I think it's important as a tech reviewer to have hands-on personal time with each company's products and to not play favorites. My last seven personal gaming PCs were all Intel-based and I was way overdue for an AMD system. Second, I have really appreciated the benefits of AM4's upgradability, and I'm looking forward to being able to drop a Ryzen 9 8950X 3D into my board at some point in the future. Having said that, our new video editing PC at the office is an i9-13900K because Adobe just likes Intel more. Quick Sync is awesome, and overall, it's faster pr for productivity workloads. Plus, it gives me a new daily driver on Intel's side, again, keeping things balanced. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. Thank you all so much for watching to the end of this video. Two gold stars for all of you. This is a wide selection of CPUs ranging from $67 all the way up to nearly $700. That is quite a price spread. The value is towards the lower end of the price spectrum. These two premium CPUs are for people who want to pay a bit more and just get an I don't have to care about anything level CPU performance. They are very nice, but they are expensive and the middle of the road is where the value is at. The i3 is cheap, but keep in mind, it is not going to last long or play all new games very well. It is four cores, but I'm including it because $67? If you're stuck with an FX6300, and you don't have a lot of money to upgrade, 
you can put together an i3-12100 that will blow the doors off of your old FX system. Not even night, it just absolutely demolish your old system for relatively small amounts of money. And it does at least get you into a modern supported platform. So that's nice. Links in the video description below to everything, both AMD and Intel motherboards, and yes, even the jar of peanut butter. I will remind all of you that using our links when shopping to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay is a great way to support the channel at no extra cost to you. Even when you buy a jar of peanut butter using our link, we get paid a small commission, no extra cost to you out of their marketing budget. And if you want to support us that way, it really is appreciated. You can also see the filming scripts for these videos and benchmark charts early over on Patreon. Join for just $2 per month. Or you can join here on YouTube. For $5 a month, you get member exclusive videos. And for $2 a month, you get early access to all the videos that we post here. Thank you very much for your support. Well, this was an interesting video. If this is uh, interesting to all of you and you want to see a similar top five CPU upgrade video, let me know in the comment section down below and let me know what your current CPU is and what you're thinking of going to. And I might put together one of these for upgrades rather than new builds. Thanks so much for watching. I will see all of you next time. This CPU is the best price to performance chip that we're going to look at today. If you value the month, if, if value for a 10 minute BIOS flashback from a USB thumb drive, we'll fix that right up. No, don't, no 12, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Ah, oh, no 12, 12, 12, gen required. Freaking Lord, I get, English is the hards and the words and they don't come out. Oh. You know, I didn't really say it, I guess, in the script, but you know, just to further expand on the benefits of the Ryzen is while multi-threaded, this isn't as good as the 13600K, that future upgrade path. So you lose 15 or 20% multi-threaded performance. Single thread performance, gaming performance is about the same today. And you don't have to wait four years to upgrade because you don't have a dead end platform. The lower price of this and the less expensive DDR5 make it a viable option at launch. DDR5 was too expensive, but today I kind of like this now. And to be blunt, the whole upgrade path is half the reason to buy this thing. Right. Otherwise, you buy 13600K and be done with it. It might seem bad now, but if you don't have to take out your motherboard in two years, you might go, you know, this was a good deal. And I do mention it later, but this is why my personal gaming PC at home is the 7950X. Stonks. I mean, you can leave all the toys behind and just go straight to what the, I don't have to give a crap. What does this run? Everything. How does it run fast? He's really happy I talked him into this. At the time, he was like, well, that's not necessary. But now that he's got it, he's like, I don't have to care for a long time. I could just, I don't care. And not caring can be a beautiful thing.